This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Let's take a look at some of the rendering effects available with the Firefly engine. So I have created a scene here. I've got a background photograph with Allison looking in through a shop window. So I've matched the lighting as closely as possible. And I need to add some props to the scene as well. You'll see why in a moment. So I'll open the hierarchy editor. And I'll just make visible some of the props I've made invisible. And what I've done here then is create some primitives that match the shape of the shop window. Because what I'm going to do now is just render shadows only. So I have a preset set up for the window here. So I'll come up into the render menu, down to render settings. And you can see one of the first options here for rendering effects is shadow only. So I'll click on shadow only, and then I'll render the scene. There's a test from another part of this section. It'll take just a few moments to render the scene that I've loaded. Just pre-calculating in direct light here. So there you are. This is quite a large render. So if I pull the image up here, what's happened is that Poser has only rendered the shadows. So you can treat the shadows independently here. And this can be dropped into an image editing program such as Photoshop to enhance the realism of the image. And as you see, because I've included the shop window props here, I now have a shadow that can be dropped into the photograph that you saw earlier. And we'll actually look at this in a separate section. This is a file we'll be using a little bit later on. And you can see that there are some shadows here on the figure itself. And of course, the drop shadow then on the shop window. So that's rendering shadows only. I've loaded an alien girl character here. I'm afraid this figure isn't included with Poser. It's one you'll have to search for yourself. It's actually made by a gentleman called ADP, and it's available from sharecg.com. And the character includes quite a few displacement maps to make the head work. This is just a preview. So if I, again, open the render menu and come down to render settings, you can see that the option here I selected is use displacement maps. So with the displacement map option selected, the map that's been applied to this figure will now actually have an effect. Displacement maps don't work until they've been selected on the render settings dialog box here. So again, I'll click on render now. It'll take a while to load the textures and then render the image. And there's the displacement map included with the figure. And I'll just compare that to a render without the displacement map applied. Well, I'll just move the comparison slider now. There's the render without the displacement map, and there's the render with. You can see quite a difference on the top of the head there. So displacement maps change the geometry of the object they are applied to. They differ slightly to bump maps. So this is actually changing the outline of the geometry of the head there. You can see that the difference as I move the slider. So that's the displacement map option. Now, depth of field focuses the camera on objects at the front of the scene, and all the objects at a distance will eventually and gradually become blurred. So the blurring stronger from farther from the front of the scene, and you can control the focal length of the camera as well to focus on different objects in your scene. So this effect is only visible when the scene is rendered with the depth of field option selected. So I'll come up to the render menu again. Come down to render settings, and this time I'll activate depth of field. I'll just click on save settings for the moment. And then to see what effect that focus will have, I'll come up to the display menu. Then I'll come down to guides and focus distant guide. And you can see the guide appearing here. Now I'll click on the focal length button here on the controls palette. And then I'll adjust the focus distance. And you can see then that the focus guide is actually passing through the Allison figures that I've loaded here. So I can just about pass it through her body there. You can see the focusing effect happening here. So that should now focus on her face. And with the depth of field activated, I'll just create a quick render. There's the alien girl still in the background. And you can see the effect starting to build up. The Allison figure in the front is in perfect focus. 
and the Allisons in the background are starting to blur as they recede into the background. There you are, depth of field is fairly straightforward to set up. Motion blur can be included with renders as well to create the illusion of speed. You can see here I've created an animation with the Andy figure doing some exercises, but I'll just stop that animation for the moment. This is only to show the blurring effect. So I'll just select a frame where Andy's arms are moving down fairly rapidly. And to come up to the render menu then, you can motion blur the entire document just by clicking on the option here on the render menu. That's giving a slightly blurry effect to the entire camera view. You can also activate 3D motion blur from the render menu. So I'll come down to the render settings dialog box again. And this time I'll add 3D motion blur. And then I'll just render this single frame. So that would be included as part of an animation. And you can see that the parts of Andy's body that are moving the quickest are blurring the most. His hands are blurring, his knees are blurring slightly, and his body. So that's applying motion blur. Now another rendering effect available in the preview window is the ability to test anti-aliasing. So I've just zoomed in a little bit on the Andy character. You can see some of the jaggedness going on around his limbs here. So I'll come up to the render menu, and then you can test anti-aliasing just by clicking on anti-alias document. And you can see that everything is smoothed off nicely here. You can also create cartoon renders by using the Toon Outline option on the Render Menu column here. But this won't work unless you set up some Toon shaders in your material groups. So just looking at the Toon Outline here, you have some options on the drop-down menu. Thin Pen, Thin Pencil, Thin Marker, Medium Pen, Medium Pencil, Medium Marker, Thick Pen, Thick Pencil, and Thick Marker. So the outline is selected there, Thin Pen. I'll stick with that for the moment, so I'll save the settings. But in the material room, I've set up some tune values for the objects here. You can see a tune ID value here. There's also set up tune render whack rows. I'll just click on the button here. And this just allows you to quickly apply default tune shaders to your materials and your group sets. So I'll just click on yes in this particular case. I've set up some whack rows for a lot of the other parts of the cook figure here. Let's just go over his skin here. Let's close the fly up menu there. And you can see there's a tune ID number here, which shows that the default tune shaders are set up for that particular part of Cook's head. So I'll come back into the pose room. And if I click on the render button now, it should render as a cartoon. And because the tune shaders are set up, rather than it being a realistic color then with some strange outlines, it's rendering it as a tune shader, making it a little bit more two dimensional. And of course, everything can be adjusted using the material room. So that's rendering a cartoon. So those are some of the rendering effects that you can apply to your renders.